Yep, that's me. You may be wondering how I got here. Let me explain. Impact. All right, I love that the sun went away as soon as I sat down. Hello, um, what up? I'm back. Today, I am going to be getting ready for a day of staying at home um, and going nowhere. But I figured I don't really want to talk about this just sitting down, talking to a camera. So I'm going to pretend like I am being on one of those, um, you know when people do their makeup, like celebrities, and they explain what they do and stuff? That's what I'm going to pretend like I'm doing because I feel like it makes it less uncomfortable for me to just talk to a camera. So that's what we're doing today. So hello, welcome back. Welcome if you're new. My name's Corinne. And today I'm going to be talking about being unemployed for about a year. In four days it'll be, no, three days it'll be exactly a year since I graduated college. And I'm still unemployed. You go get a damn job. Yeah. Let's just get into it, shall we? Let's do this. All right, we're just going to put BB cream on because that's what you do. Uh, yeah, so I guess I can tell you my little story. Uh, before I start though, I do want to make a disclaimer that what I'm about to talk about, I want to acknowledge that I am very much privileged in the fact that I could live at home, not have to pay rent, be on my parents' health insurance, and not have to freak out about getting a job right away, um, like a, a full-time real job right away, um, because I did have support of my parents and I am so freaking grateful for them. Um, and I really don't know what I would be doing if I wasn't here. So I want to say that um, obviously not everyone can take this time. And so I want to acknowledge that and, and definitely speak on that first. So just a little disclaimer for you guys. So what I'm starting with is the Dream BB Cream for Maybelline because baby it's Maybelline. Yeah, so I graduated a year ago and it was May of 2020, so obviously we were not able to have a real graduation. Um, and that did make me sad at the time. They actually just posted something on my university, I went to the University of Buffalo, and they posted something on their website talking about how they want to have a celebration for the class of 2020 in the fall. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go back to that if that happens. It just seems like it's been too long. <coughs> yeah, my friends and I were talking about that. I mean, it's nice that they're doing it, but like, it's just been so long that I've just accepted the fact that I will never have a real graduation, and that's totally fine. So, graduated back then. What my initial plan was uh, about a year, almost two years ago, was that I was going to apply for my PhD. Also, I'm so sorry for the faces I'm about to make when doing my makeup. It's quite terrifying. I wanted to go for my PhD in political psychology, which is basically focusing on kind of the psychological roots of political behavior. Um, and so that has to do with voting, that has to do with candidate choice, that has to do with advertising for campaigns and things like that. I'm still very much interested in that. Um, however, I decided that in the beginning of fall of 2019 that I was not going to go right into a PhD program. And thank God I didn't because I am very <laughs> up in the air about what I want to do with my future now um, in regards of education. However, I decided that. So then I realized that I was not prepared to find a job because I had not thought about finding a job right after college because I always thought I was going to go to school. I kind of freaked out and, you know, procrastinated applying to jobs because that's just what happened. So I started applying to jobs late in February of 20, uh, 29, no, 2020 I started applying to jobs for a May 2020 graduation. And to be honest though, when I'm looking back on it, like it wouldn't have really done much if I had looked earlier because a lot of people that I know who had looked earlier and got a job, like lost that job. So it's not the worst thing. Um, so I applied to jobs. I didn't hear anything back and I thought that was weird at the time. And now I'm so used to just not hearing back from companies after applying. Um, if you're looking for a job right now, you know that that's what happens. So I just didn't, didn't uh, hear anything, hear anything back. And I did get like one or two emails about companies being in a hiring freeze. So that, that happened. So the world shut down in March of 2020, we all know. Um, and I moved back with my parents for about a month in March when like things were really 
bad and then they got worse but I had to go back to Buffalo so I was there for like a month and then I moved home. I've been home ever since. I redid my bedroom. I adopted a kitten. Kind of delved into things that I haven't looked at much in the past like four years like YouTube and just like more creative projects and I found that I really liked them. So that was summer and summer I wasn't freaking out because I really wanted to move to New York. I still do. That's the plan. Um, I've lived in New York before. I've also lived in New Jersey like right across the river um, and so like I had commuted into the city so like I'm, I'm well aware of the city. The reason I'm looking in New York is because there's more opportunities there for me. It's in the state that I live in so I'm close to my family. A lot of my family lives on Long Island so I can see them and so like it's really just for opportunities and family that I'm moving to New York. Has anybody else realized over COVID that you just can't remember things as much because I feel like my memory it's gone. It's it's non-existent. It wasn't great to begin with though, so I guess that's that's something. So that was the summer and I wasn't panicking because I was like, you know what, it's like we're still in a global pandemic, things aren't great, uh, and I really shouldn't freak out that much. And then fall came, and then winter came, um, and things got a little bit more uh, nerve-wracking because, you know, uh, also TikTok really taught me that you should be putting blush on your nose because honestly, I think it looks really cute. It's like a little sun's kiss look, which it's funny because I could literally go outside in two seconds and get a sunburn even with like SPS 270. That's besides the point. Anywho, over that time though, I applied to different jobs. So I applied to jobs in journalism, which I would be really fascinated with. I applied to jobs at universities. I've applied to like entertainment, the entertainment industry, um, within politics and without like outside of politics. Applied to like political places. I've applied to nonprofits. I've applied to many, many, many jobs. Um, and so I think if I didn't take this time, and it's funny, right? Because I talk about it like I have willingly taken this time, which I have not. This is literally like I'm just getting rejected from jobs, um, which that's okay. And I don't feel uncomfortable talking about on YouTube because this is a reality and this is my life. This time that I didn't ask for has been very helpful and I've learned a lot. I have started a podcast with my best friend. You can check it out, Those Friends from College. We upload every Tuesday. I have created a website for myself, like a professional website, and I've learned more about political psych and I, I've wrote, like written about it and I've spent time with my family that I don't even think would have been possible if I didn't have this time. My family is very close and so like I really do actually love being home and I love being with my family. I obviously want to move but I do feel very comfortable here and I think that's a good thing because I've been here for so long. Yeah so here we are a year later and there are many things that I've learned and if you've gotten this far you can learn about them too. One thing I learned is that colleges, not everyone, but most colleges have a stigma against creative outlets. Now, it's different if you're going to college for a creative thing, but I think if you go to college for, okay, I went to college for psychology and political science, two very academic focus, academically focused disciplines. And I loved them. I loved what I learned. I, lo I loved a ton of my professors. I learned a lot from them. But there was this constant push to either go into academia right after or well, really that was mostly the push. There was like a small push to maybe go work on a political campaign in my political science classes or, I mean, that was it. Like it was always academic. And so I really never thought to, oh, I should mention like obviously in psychology you can go into social work or you can go into counseling or you can go into consumer behavior, things like that. Uh, but the discipline that I was in, I was mostly focused on like social psychology and things like that. And so that was really focused on academics, going into academia. That's what I mean. So, which nothing wrong with that, honestly, like I know people who are getting their PhD right now and, um, they love it or they, it, they enjoy it. Um, and so, whoa, those are too long. Going back to academia and things like that, I was not taught or I was not advised about how many different things you can go into after college with a four-year degree from a good university. Am I mad about that? No, because realistically, I think the professors, like, obviously they've been in the discipline for a while and so they know that academia is a good 
route to go down with that kind of degree and it is hard to get a job with just a bachelor's degree now which don't get me started on that because that's just like not everyone should go to college because like if you don't want to go to college and you think that you will thrive in a trade job or you think that you want to do something else and you don't want to go to college like that is so stigmatized and is ridiculous because there's so many good jobs that you can get without a college degree also if you go get a four-year degree and you pay tons of money for it, there, it's not guaranteed that you get a job. And that's concerning because you just have to get so much more education now than you used to. And that's just a disadvantage to so many people. And that's also not what I've learned. But these are just rants that are coming to my head. Do I blame them for pushing academia on us? No, because A, they're biased. They're in academia. They know it worked. And B, it is like a smart choice. But it's not for everyone. So I do wish that I was advised and told about different opportunities that I could go into. I guess that's a lesson is like your professors and your advisors are going to tell you the best paths that you can go down and you should listen to them but also like know that there's other things out there um, besides what they're talking about. You don't have to go into a certain field after college. You don't have to have a dream career. I don't know. Things change after college. You really reflect. Because lesson two, I would say, is if you have the chance to take time after graduation, whether you choose it or you don't, it will be worthwhile for something. You will learn. You will have the time to reflect on your life so far and what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. So it's okay to take time off. Don't let anybody tell you that because you're taking time off, you are unqualified to go into a job or you are um lazy or you you know you ch you're choosing not to be employed and i just think that's so unfair um for people to say and i've i've heard it like <laughs> i've seen many things especially those people who talk about like i i really have an issue with people that talk about things like willpower and if you just had enough willpower you would find that job or you would stick with that habit or you would get in shape or all those things and like that's just not healthy. So I definitely think taking time off was a blessing for me. Now, would it have been better if I find a job like a while ago? Yes. Do I want a job? Yes. I am trying to see this time as a blessing because if I don't look at it like that, it's just not helpful. So I would definitely say that. And the third piece of advice, we talk about this on our podcast, by the way, so definitely check out our podcast. But the third thing, and we talk about this, is you are going to have a different path than every other person you graduated with. That's normal. That happens. You are not, we are not cookie cutter like pieces. Um, we all have a different path and you may take six months to find a job while your best friend or boyfriend or acquaintance or enemy or whatever finds their dream job right after college. That doesn't mean that you're less than a, than them. That doesn't mean you're less of a person than them. That doesn't mean you're less competent. Um, it just means that your path is a little bit different and that's fine. We get so in our own heads, and I do it too, about comparing ourselves to other people, especially when it comes to career choices and career aspirations and successes. And if we just stop and think about the fact that people have little success, Okay, my camera died. Um, but what I was saying is basically people have little successes in each day that like, we may not acknowledge as successes, but they are successes. There are so many people in situations that aren't in the societal norm of where you're supposed to be at a certain time. And I see it so often where people post about how awful they feel because they're not doing what is expected of them. And they wouldn't be thinking that way if society told them that they were doing it wrong. So I've been listening to Matthew McConaughey's book, Green Lights. I got the audiobook. It's fantastic. Also, I can listen to Matthew McConaughey. And I don't know why his voice is so soothing. It just is. But he talks about green, green lights, yellow lights, and red lights. He says that there's a lot of green lights, right? Positive things. But we also have yellow lights that are kind of like warnings, like mm, maybe you shouldn't do this. Or you have red lights. So like you get a job rejection, for instance, that red light, that job rejection may just be pushing you towards that opportunity that you couldn't even see at that time. But over time, 
maybe it be a month from now, maybe it be six months from now, maybe it be 10 years from now, you realize that that job rejection pushed you into the life that you really wanted. Look, I am not an optimist by any means. Um, <laughs> I'm actually a, uh, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm like 50-50 pessimist and optimist. It's a good place to be when you're living on this earth that we live on. So I'm not gonna say that I am constantly this positive person who thinks like this, but I do think that's a good lesson to have, that not every red light is necessarily a bad thing. Um, it may just be pushing you towards a beautiful green light that you'll hit at some point. I feel like I have transformed as a person over this time. My college self when I graduated is not nearly the person that I am now. And the person I am now is not going to be the same person I'm going to be in a year. But I definitely think that this time, though extremely hard and extremely draining and discouraging, has been one of the most important things that has happened in my life because I have just learned so much. Though my life not may not be what you would want for your life and what society would say that you would want for your life, and I may be seen as a college graduate failure, I don't know. Um, I don't see myself as that though, and my family and my friends don't see me myself as that. So I don't really give a shit. <laughs> so yeah. I am living my own life, I'm figuring out my own path, and that's good enough for me. That's it for today. I need to like get off this philosophic talk. Well, thank you for listening to me if you've gotten, uh, you gotten this far in the video. Uh, thank you, you're great. And yeah, I will see you guys next week.